Igocha. Where were you? Igocha. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you?
get it, say to me.
to question our determination. If you have any doubts before you came here today, as an how serious we are, I am sure by the end of this year, you will no longer have any need to doubt us. You will not have serious we are. Yes, so when they came to my house to kill me with a battalion of soldiers, Nigeria Air Force, Nigeria Police, DSS. Mobile police, military police, just named it. As I have said on numerous occasions, we lost 28 men. They died because of you. Hmm that Biafra may come, that you may rediscover who you are once again and stop dwelling in a foreign land. Mm -hmm. The mistakes of the past will come to haunt us if we fail to grasp this very opportunity before us to support everything that IPOB is doing to ensure that Biafra is restored as quickly as possible. If you fail to restore Biafra, you will die in shame. If you fail to restore Biafra, you will just be a footnote in history. But if you help to restore Biafra, your place in history will never ever be forgotten. Yes. Yes. I am in the USA. Long time ago, some men were taken from somewhere near our nation. Their wives and their children, they brought them to this country. As some of you may know, or as some may not know, they went to a place, uh, it's called um, Savannah, is that correct? In Georgia. Savannah, Georgia, yeah. The Able Land. I've been there. I don't know how many of you have been to that very place. I have been there. When the white man asked me when I was writing my thesis in England, he said, why must you decide to do a critique of dependency theory? I said, because I am descended from this part of Biafra, where men consider it an honor to be dead than to be slaves to fellow men. The unique privilege. I consider myself lucky to be born an Igbo man and a Biafran. It is the best part that anybody can have in life if you come from Africa, I assure you. But some of us don't know what it means. We have jettisoned our pride. We have mortgaged our sense of self-worth. We are now servants to those who between 1940 and 1960 we are not considered good enough to be our great men. Hmm. When the Igbo Union used to hold sway in the zoo called Nigeria, Igbo Union represented the finest thing in a diaphragm, it encapsulated everything beautiful about the whole person. Not of an essay. As a Igbo Union that built a bar national high school. Do you know that? Do you know that? In fact, it was Igbo National, is that correct? Yes. Before we named it. Since that very time, Chuko Kikabiyama gave us a big thing and light in Mbakwe. Mbakwe came and that light was prematurely extinguished. And after Mbakwe left, the state has been left bereft of men of ideas, <laughs> men of conviction, men of very deep intellect, and men who can be relied upon in times of crisis. What we have now are artificial Igbo men, artificial Biafrans, People that find solace in serving people that ought to be serving them. Some of you are here today because now you realize that the families are getting very close to your villages. Is that correct? Yes. Very close. 
And I ask you, who do you think is going to stop them? Who will stop full and me from taking over your villages? It's only IPOB by the grace of God. Yes, so. I said only IPOB can. No other person will. Yes. They lack the metal. They lack the stomach. And they are not brave enough to confront this very clear and imminent danger that is confronting each and every one of us. I came here in 2015, not too far from the hotel where I'm staying. I told the World War Congress then to give me guns and to give me bullets that you in the USA need defending. They did not believe me. But today, every organization around the world is looking for IPOD because they have now realized that we have always been right. There is nothing I say that doesn't come to pass. Everything I say comes to pass. I mean everything. It may sound wretched and pathetic to you. It may sound unrealistic to you. It may sound like a joke to you, but in the end, it comes to pass. It comes to pass because Chukwubi Kaabiyama is sending you a message through us. Some of you will not listen, and those that will not listen, your land will fall to the full and ease. Those that fail to listen, they will be cannibalized in the process. Your daughters will be abducted, your mothers will be raped. And your wife is taken away from you. You are being extorted on a daily basis. The largest checkpoints you have anywhere on earth is in Biafra land. That's right. There is no federal presence in the land that the oil and gas that sustains the zoo comes from. We, are, we have now been reduced to begging for the position of ordinary secretary to government. That is how low we have fallen. That is how foolish we have become due to a combination of cowardice, jealousy, greed, envy, and gossip. Because the only way a Biafran, I did not say an evil man, the only way a Biafran can rise up is by gossiping the brother or the sister to fool any people, to your back. Those that doubt what we say should have heard what the doctor said yesterday. It was just the wasn't it? Yes. They withheld his certificate to the Senate, you know, like a little child. He was jumping up and down, begging for it. They said, are you willing to condemn your people? He said, yes, please give me the certificate. Are you willing? He said, yes. The same man that I've spent four years telling you that we should vote for ABC in order for Igbo presidency to come in 2023, only yesterday said, there is nothing like Igbo presidency anymore. <laughs> Am I correct? Yes. Uh -huh. I know, yeah. I yes. Know, yeah. Did you hear it? Yes. So does Alba. Yes. But it's an In the crowd of town. An awesome man planted in your midst to convince you to turn your brain against IPOB for four years. At last, when he got to Abuja, he declared before the world that his people are irrelevant. They no longer matter in the scheme of things. That everything happened to us, we deserve it. And they are your leaders. Before the Fulani man came to kill me, they sought the permission of two people. British government and so-called Igbo leaders. 
And they gave them the go ahead to kill me. Yes, the women did. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And the so called governments. Mm -hmm. They gave Fulani people permission to come to Siena Afara to kill our people. And now I ask you this question How many times have you heard that a modern governor asked the army to come and kill Boko Haram? None. Hey. As they we are busy twisting all of your brains against IPOB and against myself, they we are busy preparing for the invasion of our land. Mm. You know, you're not hearing about it. Some of you here don't know what is happening back home. Because they deliberately starve you of that very information. The same thing happened during the war. A look who fell after only three months of the war starting. As we are fighting in Abana, in Oka, in Onesha, as we are fighting inch by inch every territory of land in our place, people in Enugu are going to school. Are you aware of that? They were going to school in Enugu. Yes, because it will fail after only three months. <laughs> People in Enugu did not know what was happening at Ogiwe. The same way you are today, because all your news media is being controlled by people that don't wish you to be alive, I tell you. Oh. They want you dead. There, there are good people, as in, with every society, you have the good, the bad, and the very ugly. Yeah. The same way it is over there, and the West is how it is in the East. They went through our land conversing for the prescription of IPOB, for the attacking of myself and IPOB as a terrorist entity. But today, I travel more freely than Jubril al -Sudani. That's right. I travel more freely than Biatai. I travel more freely than all those who are in charge of the persecution of the innocent. Yes. 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 To let the world know that we're not terrorists. All we are asking for is an opportunity to be free. But the greater burden lies in your hands, all of you, here and today. If you want Biafra to come, Biafra will come. If you prefer to be slaves or be at least voluntary slaves in America, because before it was by force, now it's voluntary. <laughs> if you want to be voluntary slaves in America, you're more than welcome to do so. But understand this very thing that the more you reside here without fighting to be free, the more you are saying to yourself and to the whole world that you are worth less than an animal. I'm telling you the truth. If you don't have any share, you remain in America. You will not go to IPOB. You will not join us in what we are doing. You will find every excuse not to be part of this very great movement. But as one zoo lawyer said, senior advocate of the zoo, <laughs> he said that IPOB's agitation is historic. That the foundations of the zoo is shaking in today's place of IPOB. That full armies have not come into your villages to pick you one by one is because of IPOB. That the zoo, including Yoruba, that they are still living is because of IPOB. Hmm. <laughs> but they know how to divide us, and they do it very well, perfectly well. Yes. Hmm. I remember it was in 2015, it was. When we were making our overtures to our cousins in the coastal region, especially the Jaws, the 
Polo went and did the press statement. He's still online to me today. Saying that a bigger masquerade, like Buhari is cutting him, who is in the camera? All these things are documented that you sort of there online, you can find it if you look for it. But the same person that he aligned with has been persecuting him and his village that led to the death of his father till this very moment. Yep. His village was occupied only last week by the army. Again. And that is why I said to them, any time you walk with full army, you stand yourself with that nonsense called Nigeria. You will always return in shame. shame. Yes. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Eventually they'll discuss you. You said it. Yeah. Now, full army is they come to Anambra and they kill us. Because Jubril, or should I say the cabal, led by Abagiari, confirmed Obi are not in power for another four years. Now, Fulani can come into Alhambra and kill as many of us as possible. The governor that is the chief security officer of the state will not say anything. And now I ask some of you here. What is your justification for supporting these people that are against us? Our enemies come all the time to kill us and they do nothing. They went out of their way to ask for this to kill us in our own land. Some of you talk about them in glory times. Some of you even go as far as trying to acknowledge them. But they are the source of your problem and they will lead to your destruction because they cannot see. As we were coming here, it occurred to us, I think there was a bit who reminded us that um, that thing that Othman Danfolio said and the Sadwana echoed that they will conquer us and use us as they are willing to use it, willing uh, Slaves. tools or whatever it is called. Slaves. Slaves. That they will conquer us all the way to the ocean. Mm. Have you read it? Yes. Have you already? And it's now time to fix it. And that time is now. You see, I don't believe that the white man is gone. Okay. I believe that God is too good to be in heaven. That the way we are today is as a result of how. And today, our communities are under siege and we are able to ashamed to acknowledge it. And some of you still refer to an as the apex social cultural organization. A group they put together for you. I pointed who the leadership should be, tell them what to do, and they do it. When it's too late, they come out and tell you, oh, Nigeria can no longer be one. When did he say it? Was it yesterday? Yeah, oh, on Friday, yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. That's right. <laughs> the same man that said that when now they come, he's finding the embers of war. Today, he has realized that Nigeria is unsalvageable. It's something I told him in his sitting room. You cannot stop the suit. Hmm. Much like it. it is not rocket science. No matter what you do, Nigeria will never love you. At all. That's true. It doesn't matter what you do, they never love you. I also said it long time ago, many months ago, that Tinubu will put your back into trouble. <laughs> and today, your back people are not confirming what I told them. Tinubu's ambition for the presidency will sink your bodies. And today, the Fulanese are there. They cannot talk because it's either you fight the Fulanese and lose the presidency, or you are allowed to take over your land.
so you can be president. I hope you're following me very carefully. Our fight is to save everybody. My little friend, what was your name then? Including the other people. Including the T.Y. Banjuma that fought us during the war. Hmm. His name is Theophilus. He's a Christian. That's right. The world is so ashamed. They are killing his people. He can no longer talk. I told them that the zoo, if they don't give us the Afro, if you remember. That Somalia would be better than Nigeria. I said it. Yes. Then you know when he goes to Nigeria, he's getting them. That's it. Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Let him go. I'm going to go now. And before we leave the zoo, we are going to fight our way out. You may not like it, but it's the truth. Because you left it too late. Ooh. It's your fault. You know that Elohim is very wonderful. Mm -hmm. The Jews, our cousins in Israel, made this same foolish mistake we are making today. <laughs> 